It's now time for The Sit Down with Don Tony. The Sit Down, where Don Tony talks one on one with his followers. What are you looking at? About the world of pro wrestling, pop culture, and so much more. The Sit Down with Don Tony. And now, your host, Don Tony. The original. There's only one often imitated, never duplicated. Good evening, everybody. It is May 15th, 2022. You know, I know that the Don Tony show is the flagship show of everything that we do here. I got to be honest with you. The sit down intro is probably my favorite intro of all time. Um, and, the, and the funny thing is, is that the gentleman who did it for me, just asked me, you know, what's the overview? And he knows, you know, where I live and my background and everything like that. And I said, you know, I want a little theme, you know, like the sit down with the mob and all that. He's like, I know exactly what you want. And the first time he showed it to me, beautiful. Hey, Gifa, Gifa. How's everybody doing tonight? It is Sunday night. I think I might have said that already. Now, tonight we're going to do this a little bit different. Um, yes, we will take calls. Yes, we will answer questions because that is what Sunday is all about. I sit back, blank piece of paper, whatever you want to talk about, that's what we talk about. Nothing planned, no clickbait, no teasers, no news. Although I have to say, you know, I uh, saw this morning what happened with uh, that shooting in Buffalo, New York, and that, that's horrible. That is horrible. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a hate crime, no question. And the most disgusting thing about it is the fact that, you know, you have people that are taking this and turning it into like a, a real deep agenda for, you know, it, it, they're racists. They're racists in this world. They'll be racist till the day we die. There was racism hundreds of years ago. And what we got to do is we got to be better ourselves. That's not a generic tweet. We have to be better. No, I try to treat people how I want to be treated. Plain and simple. You know, people disrespect me. Okay. You know, they don't get the attention that maybe sometimes they deserve, but, uh, it's horrible. It's horrible. And uh, my condolences to everybody that was involved with that. It was awful. And a uh, few people had told me that he streamed it, I think, on Twitch. DT, you want to see the footage? Why do I want to see the footage of that? You know, it's it just absolutely terrible. So, Nero Fay, happy 13 months as a member of the family. I know longer than that, but... Uh, much love. I hope everything is safe. He is tuning in right now from Israel. I think it's the wee hours in the morning. You should be sleeping. You should be sleeping. I should, oh, actually, I shouldn't be sleeping. Believe it or not, I got the coffee all ready to go. Piping hot. And I tell you, once again, what's this brand? Ember? Like Ember Moon? It's a, a self heating mug. If I don't put it on the charger, it'll keep the coffee the same temperature for about an hour, which uh, is pretty cool. Now, what are we doing different tonight? We're still doing calls. We're still doing live chat Q&A in the chat room, but we're going to give away two prizes tonight. Not too long ago, I did a poll as far as like women in wrestling, you know, signed photos, you know, who would you like, you know, what's your preference? And AJ Lee, AJ Brooks was at the top of the list. So tonight we're going to give away a pair of AJ Brooks, AJ Lee, whatever last name you want to use. We're giving away two AJ signed photos. Uh, how are we going to give them away? Plain and simple. After the show is over, in the comments section, we'll probably let everybody vote for about two days because not everybody catches the show live. Um, you vote on who your favorite caller of the night was and who the favorite question that we answered in the chat was. All I ask is that uh, you pick two different people. 
Somebody may call in and knock it out of the park with a question, and somebody, that same person may write an awesome question in the chat room as well. I wanted to do two, only because not everybody wants to call. Not everybody, you know, thinks on the air. They're not, you know, the best voice for audio, you know, so it's good. So one caller, one text, we'll give away two photos. We'll give everybody until, eh, Tuesday night, midnight, Tuesday night, midnight. So majority rules. I'll probably post a thread. Actually, yeah, I will post a thread in the comment section and you just vote in that thread. Who is your favorite question called in and typed? So we already got a couple of questions coming in. Uh, by the way, I want to thank everybody who sent in some of those super thanks yesterday. That was pretty cool. That caught me off guard. I was not expecting that. Um, that was pretty cool. But uh, tonight, you know, and remember, you're not, don't feel obligated to send in a super chat or super thanks. I mean, they're appreciated, but I want to talk to each and every one of you out there. And I don't want it to be feel obligated like you have to do something or not. But I have to open up with this question. And Ledud, I saw what you wrote earlier. And um, I think this is an exception to the rule. Uh, who, who sent this in? Mikey, Mikey, good old little Mikey. Hey, Mikey, life cereal, Mikey. He sends this in thoughts on aces and 0.8s returning the impact. <sighs> I looked it up now. Yes, it is impact spoilers. I know some of you out there were a little annoyed. No, I don't want to hear spoilers. Look, in this case, I think we should talk about it. Number one, because it's everywhere. You go on social media, if you follow a bunch of accounts, people are talking about it. And the second reason why I think we make the exception to rule and we talk about it is because of who actually from Aces and 0.8s showed up. Now, I know some of you that might be newer to the show saying, DT, no, 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 it's Aces and 8s, not Aces and 0.8s. Uh, for newer viewers out there that don't know the story, Back then, when I was feuding with Bully Ray, when I was really criticizing Impact Wrestling big time, to the point that he invited me to go to Florida, confront him in the ring, on TV. Probably not cable TV, but maybe it probably would have been a YouTube fiasco. Uh, he wanted to confront me about things I was saying. Now, I didn't do it. I'm not stupid. And I don't blame him for sticking up for the company he worked for. And in hindsight, yeah, I think I was way too over the top with my criticism. And we have cleared things up since then, indirectly, indirectly. But at that time, I was ripping apart Tito Ortiz. Tito Ortiz, look at me! And nobody reacted. And the ratings started to go down during these aces and eights that I called them the aces and 0.8s because that's the rating that they used to get. You go back during the early stages of that storyline, their ratings dropped down to 0.8. We made up t-shirts. We made up logos. I still have all the logos. I may have to bring them back. And I got threatened with a lawsuit from Impact Wrestling. Uh, take those designs down. Otherwise, you know, you could have some problems. So I was like, you know what? It ain't worth it. So I pulled the designs down. But yeah, we called it aces and 0.8s at the time. All right. Just to summarize it, who actually returned Garrett Bischoff and Wes Briscoe? You know, we're not talking about Bully Ray. We're not talking about Nux. We're not talking about Wes Briscoe and Garrett Bischoff. And I have nothing against either guy but you know in my honest opinion and look i support impact wrestling scott demore is busting his ass everybody who works behind the scenes there i'm a fan of impact wrestling and i'm saying this with the utmost respect intended if you're gonna bring back a major group and you only give west briscoe and garrett bischoff People are going to laugh at that. I know he would, they were managed by D'Lo Brown. But if you're going to bring back a faction, you got to bring... That's like bringing back the NWO and it's Horace Hogan and Vincent. 
maybe not Vincent right now because he's going through health problems, but you come back with the, look, the NWO is back. And then you read the spoilers and it's, uh, I'm trying to think who else. I, I, I and Horace Hogan, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, Virgil get well. Yes, we talked about it yesterday and I looked into it. And um, yeah, we, we, we will be sending him a little something uh, on his GoFundMe. I haven't decided if we do a whole live stream for that. You know, I'm always skeptical about doing stuff like that. Like we did it for Shad Gaspard because he had passed and that went to a charitable cause. Uh, we did it um, right after everything that happened with George Floyd. We donated money. We donated money with, uh, you know, um, what went on with Ukraine. We sent the donation. We sent donations with hurricanes. Katrina is the most infamous one back in the day. I sent almost $6,000. $6,000 and it was well documented. Um, that was a mess. I mean, not just the storm, but what we did. We'll talk about that another time. But um, I'm always skeptical about sending in GoFundMes for people who are, you know, being evicted or have a lot of expenses or health. Because if you don't see the bills, you know, you don't know if that money's really going to a bill or if it's going to Grubhub. And I know that sounds absolutely cold, but there was a story, and I don't remember who the female wrestler was. Maybe one of you remember it, but, you know, her house was destroyed in a storm or really leveled in a storm. You may remember this about five, six years ago, and she put up a GoFundMe, and she said that insurance is not covering it. Now, I'm in the insurance field. I have my own office since, since 98. And when I looked into the state that she lived in, I don't remember if it was North, uh, if it was, um, oh, crap, Louisiana or something like that. But when I looked into it, I said, look, if your insurance company turns it down, put in a claim with FEMA. FEMA will pick up a majority of the expenses that the insurance company will not cover. And she deleted what I said. And then I wrote back and I'm saying like, why are you deleting my stuff? I'm just trying to help you. And I got blocked. And I was like, is she double dipping? Is she too lazy to fill out the stuff with FEMA? You know, run the GoFundMe, pay my bills. The young bucks, the young bucks, you may remember this about two years ago, posted a link for a GoFundMe that somebody that they knew or, or somebody that was a big fan of theirs was getting evicted from their home and they needed a certain amount of money quickly. Otherwise, they were going to be evicted. Now, my first reaction was, you know, the Young Bucks probably could have paid that like this. You know, what do you need to send us links for? And all I did was ask the guy, I'm like, you know, uh, what's the name of your landlord? I said, we want to send a check directly to him. Del deleted my thing and blocked me. Didn't post an address, didn't post a landlord, didn't post an invoice. All he said was, I'm being evicted, send me money. So I'm very skeptical with a lot of causes like that. In the case of Virgil, it is legit. It is definitely legit. And um, colon cancer is no joke. It's no joke. Ah, oh, Ranch, and it's not even being like a private investigator or a scumbag. And, and believe me, it's not intended that way. But, you know, we live in a, in a world now of extreme laziness. And um, look, when you're sick or somebody dies or, you know, that's different. But when someone is sitting on Twitter for 10 hours out of the day and then turns around and is crying for two years, I got no money, I can't do this, I can't pay bills. And then you say to him, like, you know, go get a job. Go work at a fucking gas station at a bodega, Dunkin' Donuts, work in an office that's beneath me. Well, too fucking bad. And then you look at their tweets and it says sent from iPhone. You know, maybe you get one of those Medicaid free phones. Got a thousand dollar phone and sitting on Twitter for 10 hours a day. And I'm supposed to feel bad that they don't go out and try to find a job. Work from home. Lick envelopes all night long. I don't know. That's how I look at it. You know, I mean, everybody is different. 
but we are in this world of, hey, you know, I don't, I don't feel like doing this. Let me post this so, a, a sympathetic story, and maybe I'll get a few people to send a couple of dollars my way. And you never know where the money is used. You don't get receipts. You don't get this. You don't get proof. You honestly have no idea if the money is going to where it is. And what happens when they raise too much money? Do they give it back? Does it get sent into a charity or something? No, I think it goes, you know, and hey, look, look, I got new Chinaware. Hey, everybody, I got the latest iPhone 19. I did not see the Hacksaw Jim Duggan video update, Rams fan, to be honest with you. Please divulge a little bit further what happened. Oh, yes, Lucellus. I'm glad you sent this early enough that I could pull a video. My thoughts on what happened Saturday with Joe Black and the fan at IWE Pro. All right. By the way, we'll open the phone lines in a couple of minutes. Let's do some text Q&A. You know, loosen up the mood. Everybody gets a little situated. We find a groove, and then boom, we open the phone lines. And I'll put the numbers up in a couple of minutes. Uh, all right. Look, I'm going to tell you straight out. I never heard of Joe Black before. I never heard of IWE before. I saw the video. I have it here for all of you to see. And basically, this wrestler, after the match ended, um, it appears that he, you know, talking to a fan and he's a heel, slaps, knocks the, I should say, knocks the hat off of a wrestling fan sitting ringside. I'll let you see the video for yourself, but the wrestling fan proceeds to headbutt Joe Black and everything goes out of control. Um, I'm going to show you the video and I'll give you my honest thoughts about it. Um, eh, why am I wasting time? By the way, I do want to post that the video is brought to you by a Twitter uh, wrestling fan at can be only one league. And I know league is misspelled, but that's intentional because the one with the correct spelling was already taken. So if you all want to follow his account, I put his screen name on the screen. This is his video. And uh, here, go check this out if you haven't seen it already or maybe you want to see it again. Pay very, very close attention because you really can't see Joe Black actually knocking the hat off. But he did. Look what happens. Check this out. Damn. Damn. Oh, Joe was about to beat it up. I thought that was Vader in the ring, and I'm not trying to be, you know. You saw him from the sideways. He looked like he had a Vader. Get him out of here. Throw his ass That motherfucker put his hands on me. That's what he said. All right, I'm not going to show the whole thing again, but I just want you to see the first 20 seconds of it. One more time. First of all, the people out there trying to make it a black-white thing, shut the fuck up. Seriously. You know, not everything is black and white. Um, number two, uh, look, some people out there feel that Joe Black should never have knocked the hat off of that fan's head. That, by the way, that was not a plant. For some people out there that think it was a plant and this was staged, no, it's not staged. Most wrestling companies are smart enough to not give the perception that a fan takes it upon himself to assault the wrestler. Um, look, Joe Black, in my opinion, should have never knocked the hat off of the guy, but I don't give a shit what Joe Black did with the hat. You do not, you do not put your hands on the wrestlers, let alone headbutt the guy in the face. 
Um, I don't know the Finn, and I don't know anything about Joe Black. I don't know, you know, what this history is, but you got to be careful at when you're around ringside. You got to know your audience a little better, especially if you interact in a way that you're really going to piss somebody off. You know, you see like a heel walk down ringside and they'll tear up a poster. They'll, you know, they may insult someone, diss them a little bit. Little kids will start crying. Adults usually will just laugh it off. And you got someone like that. You know, if you don't know that guy that big, if we don't know if he was drinking, probably not the person that you want to play your character off in. Again, what that fan did is unacceptable. I don't think charges will be filed on either side. First of all, the fan would look like an absolute moron to file charges because he slapped the hat off. But listen, I'm just saying it like this. This is, this is a point that I'm going to make that no one brought up. I didn't see not one person write this online. And when I say it, I guarantee you 99% of you out there be like, yeah, DT, that's true. How many of you ever heard stories that you're walking on a bus or somebody's walking on a bus, walking on a train, going into a club or a sports event, you accidentally step on somebody's shoes and they knock your ass out. Brand new fucking shoes. You stole accident. You stepped on somebody's shoes and somebody starts wailing on someone. You know, people snap at some of the stupidest reasons. So sure, look, if I got a brand new two, three hundred dollar pair of shoes and somebody steps on it and kind of like soils the crap out of it, you know, I'd be pissed off also. Not to the point where I'm gonna beat the shit out of someone and put them in a hospital. And by the way, if I'm going to a crowded bar, a crowded sports event, a crowded wrestling event, I probably shouldn't wear $300 brand new thing, shoes. You know, who the fuck is going to see it in a club? You're going to be dancing and the lights are going to be off. Nobody's going to see your shoes. Hey, nice shoes there. It gives a shit. So that was unfortunate. Um, you really got to be careful. I mean, look, I'm not comparing myself to Joe Black, but. I've talk, told the stories before. I'm trying to get the footage from Mr. Big. Mr. Big, if you see this, I will give you more than you would ever ask for money-wise for the footage. When we did a show in Spanish Harlem once, and I've told this story before, I went to the local bodega trying to buy something, you know, that I could use during the show. And um, I bought a big bottle of air freshener. And the air freshener was designed because I was going to spray the eyes of the Sandman. During the match, I managed, I think it was Homicide and Raven, I think it was. Or it might have been Raven and Reefer, and it was against Homicide and Sandman or something like that. And the thing was is that when I went to spray Sandman, the spray wasn't going to come out. I don't have any aerosol here to show you. I'll show you next time. But in the middle of the ring... I went to spray salmon and I pushed it down and I'm going like this and nothing is coming out. And now salmon is looking at me like you just fucked up. And I'm like, the fuck? and I go to spray it again and I'm pushing down like this and it's not coming out and I'm shaking it. And then I put it in me and all over my face, blinded, get Singapore caned a couple of times, hit under the ring, had to do poopy shit in a shopping bag underneath the ring tied it up close, and somebody unfortunately fell victim when they took apart the ring. They found a shopping bag filled with shit underneath it. That is a true story. But what does this have to do with Joe Black? What I did was I saw ringside and saw, you know, that the fans were having a good time messing around with the wrestlers. Nobody seemed, like, really angry or anything like that. I walked with the air freshener. Now, remember, this is Spanish Harlem. Almost everybody in the crowd was either Spanish or black. And I go around ringside. I'm like, oh, and I'm spraying in the air all across the front row. I'm walking around ringside like, oh, what is that? And people are like, fuck you, fuck. After the show was over and I climbed out from under the ring, 
I walked past there and those same people that were like, fuck you. They were like, man, that was a great show. Great show. Great show. And they were so cool about it. They knew it wasn't meant to be racist. It wasn't meant to be hateful. He's just playing a character. You got to feel your audience. Now, would I have done that on every show? No. When I gave all the fans at ringside cannolis at the second annual Chris Candido Memorial show. And then because everybody kept laughing at me, I kept getting assaulted after giving out cannolis that night. After everybody ate cannolis, you all know this story already. I stood in the middle of the ring and I dumped about 20 empty boxes of x lax and, and I told everyone, I said, I hope you enjoy those cannolis you just ate. Everybody thought I put x lax in the cannolis. I started getting pelted with hot dogs, beer bottles, you know, not beer, you know, plastic bottles. And I was going to say glass, you know, uh, water bottles, whatever. And then one guy at intermission, he comes up to me with his son. Son's about 10 years old, a little chubby. And he's like, listen, he says, I got to ask you an honest question, you know, because my son ate those cannolis. Did you put x lax in the cannolis? Now, me, I always thought about Bobby the Brain Heenan. When you are at a show and you are a heel, no matter what, you stay in character. So me, I looked at the guy, and the guy was pretty big, and I said to him, I said, look, I said, even if I tell you I did or I didn't, look at your son. He's got a big soda in his hand. He's got half an eat, eating hot dog. He's eating hot dogs. He's having soda. He's eating cannolis. I said, look at him. He's probably going to get a tummy ache anyway later. So no matter, this guy started turning beet red. And then I thought about Bobby Heaton again. And then I thought about, you know, the other side of it. And I'm like, hey, fuck that, man. I said, no, oh, I didn't put it in. You think I would do that to anybody? He's like, oh, I, I figured that, but I just wanted to double check. I ain't getting my ass kicked. You got to feel your people out. Um, sometimes I think people take it way too seriously. And it's unfortunate what happened there. It's unfortunate. Yeah, Mr. Big has that footage. I'm telling you, if I ever show you that footage, it is the coolest, coolest food footage. It's probably my favorite moment ever doing anything on camera. I mean, I love the stuff with Louie and I loved some of the other things as well, but that, everything was awesome about it. I mean, the entire night, it was beautiful, man. Um, Eddie K, yes. Thank you. I thanked you on Twitter as well. He was sitting front row at Impact and posted a sign, front row, 25 years of Don Tony, and that is awesome. We had 25, celebrating 25 years of Don Tony and 20 years of Impact at the same time. Love it, man. I love it. I mean, let's be honest. I know there's some other bigger podcasters out there, some who have been doing this here, especially on video, way more than me and have a much bigger audience over here, but there is no argument. There is no dispute. Not one of you will disagree with me. You look over the years online, you look at WWE shows, even AEW shows, there is nobody. Maybe the last couple of years, Busted Open may have gotten more, but overall, no podcaster, no amateur podcaster, has ever gotten as many signs at shows as yours truly. I mean, and I have every single one of them saved. And it blows me away when I look back, you know, 15, 16 years ago and seeing all the love and you still do it now. I mean, how does that not make you want to do more and have fun with the shows? Yeah, some people go to Impact, Kavan. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that, Lizelle. All right, next. All right, we talked about that. Ah, well, <laughs> it, it, thank you. Can, can be only one league for the coffee super chat. No, that's Roger Rubio. Thank you very much, my friend. Hope all is well with you. And I thank you as always for the support, buddy. Um, thank you. Chris Cutra. This is good. This is good. Anybody that's a fan of Impact, I think will love this idea. Since Eddie Kingston's side now has five guys and Moxley, Danielson, two of them, 
included, do you think William Regal will challenge Jericho to a blood and guts match the same way he announced war games in NXT? If Tony Khan was not thinking about doing that, Tony, I hear different things. I hear that you watch many podcasters out there, including yours truly. And then I get others that are like, oh, no. Not since the goody-goody stuff. Um, but that is awesome. You got to do that. You got to do that. Especially that William Regal is going to have a confrontation with Chris Jericho. Maybe you don't do it this soon. But yeah. Yeah, William Regal's got to challenge Jericho to the blood and guts match, five on five. Absolutely. I love it. It sounds cliche, one fall, but so what? You know, I've said this many times. If it's not broke, don't try to fix it. AEW does not have, put it this way. If WWE is black, AEW doesn't need to be white. If WWE is a square, AEW doesn't have to be round. They could be rectangle. If WWE is black, they could be gray. You don't have to be the complete opposite of WWE as a way to attract fans. You could do things similar to WWE. Just do it better. Just do it better. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, they pay in tribute. They pay in homage to some WWE, WWF matches from yesteryear. It was still owned by Vince McMahon at the time. Now, they're paying homage to individual wrestlers. But, man, if something is good and you think you could do it better, do it. Do it. You know, who's the first ladder match? Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels. You know, wasn't Shawn and Razor. You know, still WWF at the time. Still owned by Vince. You know, there's no reason why they can't do similar. Just do it better, in their opinion. So, yeah, I love that idea, Chris. I love it. And if Tony, Tony Khan, you know, if he, if, if he hasn't thought about that, or, I think they have. I think they have. It's just too convenient to suddenly have Danielson and Moxley involved with everything with Eddie Kingston. It sounds a little too convenient. And it's very, very even-sided. So, yeah, I love it. I absolutely love the idea. CJ Rocks would love for me to bring back this week in wrestling history. Um, I have thought about that many times, and here's the problem behind it. If I, look, my older episodes are still online. I never took those down. Number one, I play a lot of audio footage from memories of yesterday. By the way, yesterday we were talking about Superfly Afi. On my history show, we talked about that. And, you know, I got to tell you something else. You know, I don't remember the exact date. I don't have it in front of me. But if this is right, you know, go figure it out. I remember the date. But that night that Superfly Afi debuted in Madison Square Garden, you know, I, I, this, this cannot be a coincidence. Because if somebody intentionally wrote it that way, that is some of the most distasteful words you could use. If you do a Google search to try to find the footage of that night, Superfly Afi versus Ron Shaw, you'll see some websites, and they use the term that the night that Sifi Afi crashed and burned. Crashed and burned. Do you know that the next day was the space shuttle Challenger that crashed? Remember that teacher that was aboard the space shuttle and it exploded in the air? You know, you think some people would do a little research that within 24 hours of that Afi match, the space shuttle Challenger crashed and burned? You know, like, I don't know how anybody thinks that that is comical. And I think the date is too convenient, you know, to be just coincidence, you know? But um, I have that complete match on my history show. The problem is, if I put those on YouTube, I'll get flagged with copyrights. 
even if I just play audio and not play video. The second thing is, I mean, those history shows was the most amount of work I have ever done preparing for shows. I mean, I spent probably on average six to eight hours preparing for each episode. That is not something, you know, and those episodes are two to four hours long. I mean, they're three, four hours long at times because we got into as much history and history doesn't change. So if you want to see this week in wrestling history, go check out my show from a couple of years ago. I mean, of course, additional things have happened in the last two, three years, but it's so recent. There's no need to bring that up on a show. So that's why I wouldn't bring it back right now. But the shows are there. I wish I could put them on YouTube. I would put screenshots. I would put still shots while the audio is playing, but still you start playing the actual matches. I had problems with Impact. Not Impact, sorry. Ring of Honor at the time. I had problems with Ring of Honor. Impact had no problem as long as I edited the matches down. WWE had no problem as long as I didn't play 100% full matches. Ring of Honor, if I didn't play like a montage, they were going to hit me with cease and desist. I always ask for permission before I start airing footage. Sometimes I get ignored. Sometimes I get a yes. Sometimes I get a no. But with Ring of Honor, they absolutely, that's why if you look at a lot of YouTube channels and you look at highlights of Samoa Joe from back in the day or CM Punk from back in the day or Brian, uh, uh, Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson, or, or even Sami Zayn when he was there, you'll always see it's like a music video format. Otherwise, Ring of Honor will shut you shit down. Now, obviously, it's a little different with Tony Khan at the helm, but I've heard Tony Khan and, and AEW shutting down people, you know, that played, you know, a certain amount of time on footage. So, you know, I'm not against Tony Khan with that, but I don't trust, you know, it's, he's too new with Utah. I don't trust, you know, posting any footage owned by Tony Khan right now, so. Rams fan is asking, did I read the latest Killer Cross interview about him not appearing for a Ring of Honor show a few weeks ago in a fallout in the talks? Um, I've heard him talk about that a few times already. Uh, there was discussion of him appearing at Ring of Honor, WrestleMania weekend, and then obviously the sale went down with him, uh, excuse me, with Tony Khan, not him, Tony Khan, and uh, Sinclair. And... Uh, what ended up happening was some wrestlers that were originally being discussed to appear at Ring of Honor, it was a change of plans. Tony Khan wanted to focus more on wrestlers that will remain in Ring of Honor and some other wrestlers that I think he would like to bring in for a short period of time. Killer Cross is not one of those wrestlers that Tony Khan is interested in right now. Um, you know, and look, I, I'll be honest, I've said this before, and look, next month. I'm going to be interviewing Killer Cross for a little while. And I'm sure we'll talk about that. If you put Killer Cross in AEW right now, or even on the Ring of Honor side of everything, that it, it's not even back on, on any even semi regular basis, it's going to get lost in the shuffle. There's way too many Tony Khan favorites over the years that he is going to feature before anyone else. That is why Mercedes Martinez, uh, Samoa Joe, you know, you go to Trent and others. These were people that he beloved, you know, over the years. Aaron Ouchley, welcome to the family, Aaron. So Killer Cross is not going to fit into that mold right now. And I certainly don't want Killer Cross being brought into AEW just to be squashed by Wardlow in a match because that was something that, you know, was be a little buzz behind the scenes that ended up not being true. I don't want to make that news. Killer Cross was never contacted to show up in AEW just to get jobbed by Wardlow. But that was something that some people were thinking about, you know, possibly doing. I don't think he would agree to it anyway. So, no, he's not in the cards for Ring of Honor. And I don't think he should. Too, there's too many other people that are going to be utilized and pushed before him. So, Michael, do I think RK Bro is the top team in wrestling right now? Uh, you know, look, 
the reason why I put RK Bro above the Young Bucks right now, all right, and the reason why I say that is this, you know, let's look, you know, when you when you talk about Wrestler of the Year, all right, you don't give, hear me out, you don't give a wrestler Wrestler of the Year because their entire career has been some of the greatest of all time. You look at what said wrestlers are doing for that particular year. FTR two years ago were tag team of the year. Last year, big nosedive, not because they sucked, but because they were not utilized anywhere near as much as they should have. This year, a little bit different. FTR, I think, is in the running for tag team of the year. You look at Santana and Ortiz. Santana and Ortiz should be either number one or number two as far as top tag teams in AEW. And you see how they've been used in 2022. And in my opinion, it is horrendous how they have been used. So my point is, you do not choose someone for tag team of the year, wrestler of the year, or anything on that based on their track record and their history. You look at 2022. You look at what the Young Bucks have done, and you look what RK Bro has done. Even especially, you look at the way they act in the ring, their persona, cutting promos, charismatic, their relationship with the fans. You know, I mean, RK Bro is on a much different level right now than the Young Bucks. The Young Bucks are working their ass off behind the scenes. A lot of people don't realize that Cody was not EVP. And that was just the title that he just put on his shirt and he didn't do all that much. There is a boatload of work that has to be done that Cody used to do. And the Young Bucks are doing part of that. So the Young Bucks should be commended for all of the hard work they're doing behind the camera. But in front of the camera, it's not even close. RK Bro, if Riddle hasn't lost as many matches as he has in 2022, I would put them number one on the list. But in my opinion right now, I put FTR number one, RK Bro number two. I put the Usos number three. And if the Briscoes can have a few more really, really top matches, I would put the Briscoes close to number four. That's how I look at it. So good question. Every question tonight has been solid. Solid. It's going to be interesting to see the voting later. Nears asking, can I say that FTR are on a, on a great roll too? Right now, yeah, they're all, they got some great momentum. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, look, FTR, you know, you look at wrestlers who were released from WWE because creative did a shitty job with them. You know, Cody, good example. FTR is another great example. The WWE did not use the it, look. Some of you may remember when they were in WWE. I said, "Oh, WWE's going to have to do comedy with them." DT, what are you nuts? A revival comedy? What are you stupid? What did they do? I'm scratching myself for those on audio only. They did all that goofy shit with the Usos. The revival got released, and they focused. And they kept at it, and uh, they just upped their game tenfold. And FTR, if they ever go back to WWE, and they will, I think, one day, they deserve to go right to the moon. They have earned everything that they're getting right now. FTR, look, FTR is not for everybody. Me, I grew up loving Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson. And yes, they remind me a hell of a lot, like Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson. Um, and that's fine. And that's a good thing. A lot of people thought the Young Bucks reminded them of the Hardys. So what? That's a good thing. You know, wrestlers may remind you of someone from yesteryear. That's a good thing. They just put their own little twist on it. Hmm. I could bring back wrestling trivia, so fly. We can do that with giveaways. And by the way, uh, I will tell everybody now, the uh, giveaway we're going to do next week for Rampage is some Sting AEW signed photos. 
uh, I finally got a little something, you know, from someone involved with AEW to give away a couple of things. I got a few photos sent to me of Sting, but the cool thing about these photos, it is a posed photo when he wore the Darby Allen face paint that night that he wore the Darby paint. That is the autograph photos. I checked online. They're not being sold. Yeah, I know Upper Deck has like photos for like 300 bucks. Don't spend $300. So we're going to give away one or two next Friday. So I'm going to show a picture of it next week. Very, very cool photos. Beautiful looking photos too. One fall is asking, do I think a female joins the Tony D'Angelo faction? Who do I like joining it? Um, I have said this before. I got to show you a picture. I have it. I'm going to see my family, my parents Wednesday. And I think the photo is there in a drawer in my place over there. And if they, if I have it, I'll bring it home, scan it and show it to you. It's a picture of my ex-girlfriend from 1991. The only reason why I'm showing you is she's Italian. She looks like a Guido that would be from Jersey Shore. And she looks like JC Jane's twin sister. And, um, yeah, you know, look, I look different in 1991 as well. I don't want anybody to think like, BT, how did you score that? Um, I think J.C. Jane would have, if you change her look a little bit, I think she would look perfect for that role. Tatum Paxley, I think if tweaked a little bit, I think she could also play that. But for me, if I was to take a female from NXT and put her in that faction with the Guidette look, two people come to mind jc jane or ariana grace santino Morales' daughter i could see them playing that role and doing a spectacular job do i think a female will get involved if logano and tony d'angelo's group feud for an extended period of time you know you have to have somebody on Tony side as a female. You almost feel with Electra Lopez, you kind of feel like that has to be. Um, I don't think, well, obviously they're not going to take, oh, by the way, speaking of JC Jane, I got them Saturday. So this is the giveaway for the month of May. I got two of them. There you go. 11 by 16. It is signed by all three. And uh, I have two of them. So uh, how do you win? All you got to do is not only show up for at least one NXT watch party throughout the month of May, but chat, just mingle a little bit. You don't have to actually go on the stage and talk or show video, but be a little active in the chat. Don't just write, hey, all, and then nothing for the rest of the night. I mean, because some people have done that. You know, I appreciate people showing up, but don't just sign in, walk away from the computer for two hours. Like, hey, look, I got a prize. So, uh, yeah, JC Jane, I would have loved, but they're not going to take her away from Toxic Attraction. So that's why I say no to JC Jane. Ariana Grace, I think, would fit it perfectly. Yeah, Gigi. You look at Gigi Dolan with the black, when she had black hair. To me, she would have replaced Paige like this. And I still think when you look at her with the rose and the red hair, they should have had her name sound French. I wonder if I ever get the opportunity to interview her or talk to her, I'm going to ask her, did WWE ever consider having you be a little bit more like on the French side? I wonder if they ever said, like, try to talk French. Oh, mon chéri, blah, 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 blah. See, I can only think of Pepe Le Pew. Oh, the Monchetti. Ah! But maybe she tried and she sounded like she had a cold because I think Gigi Dolin. That's how I always wanted her name to be said. Gigi, not G. 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 It's almost like a Z-H. Gigi Dolin. I am Gigi Dolin. I think that would have sound so much more exotic, especially when she has the leather hat and the rose and the way she looks with it. But no, they have a more of like a South Beach chick. You know, she's more like a South Beach chick. But uh, 
I wonder if they ever said, look, try to talk French. And she, no, no, no. You will be Gigi, and you'll be a, a Florida sunbather. I know. I know. Probably couldn't nail. If, yes, thank you, Chaos. And shout out to Chaos in Austin. I mean, they, I'm sure they have a lot of other things to do, and I want to return the favors, you know, for them moderating. And, you know, I know we have unfortunately had to block some people recently. They're just a little too toxic. We just want everybody to have a good time. You know, I mean, I understand, you know, not everybody is thrilled, you know, with what I do and everything like that. But if you don't like it, just, you know, pay attention to someone else. To come here just to throw smack or start, I could, I could handle criticism. But when you just start trying to fuck with people over here, you know, you got to be removed. So, dream. Do I think MJF will defeat Roman Reigns? No, no, no. Look, MJF is his character 24-7, 365 when the camera is on him. I don't understand it. I don't get it. Why are all of these shows teasing? Is MJF leaving AEW for WWE? I mean, it's common sense. When his contract is up, if WWE makes an offer he can't refuse, he's going to go. That's not news. That's smart. That's why he's in wrestling. He wants to become a major star. He wants to make as much money for the least amount of work. Why is everybody clickbaiting? To, he, will he leave? Will this or that? You know, will I die next week? Why is that a story? You know, I he does an interview with someone. I don't remember the guy. I like the guy. But he knows MJF when the camera is on. He's going to be a schmuck and a dick. And he's going to troll. You know, and people are taking everything he says as like a major news story. Now, now you see, did you see what Fightful put out today? And I'm not saying that they're not credible. They obviously are credible. They have connections. But just, did you see that MJF won't take additional money? Uh, or AEW won't give him additional money unless there's an extension to it? We've been talking about a contract extension with MJF for two months. Now, AEW won't give MJF more money without an extension? That's normal business. Why would Tony Khan, hey, uh, hey, Maxwell, great job this month. Here's an extra $10,000. Here's, here's their version of a super chat, super promo. Yeah, super match. Uh, Maxwell loved the match. Super match. $10,000. No. Small business. Hey, we'll give you a million dollars. Stay for another year. That's what you do. That's smart business. We compared it to baseball with rookies. A rookie comes in, has two, three spectacular years, and what will the organization do? Either keep him on the rookie contract until he can now, you know, negotiate a new deal, or they try to sign him to an extension early. Didn't they do that with Mike Trout back in the day? Didn't they do that early on with Giancarlo Stanton? I'm just thinking of random people. You know, didn't they do that? I don't think they did that with Otani because Otani had already signed a big deal. But yeah, that's what you do when you have someone in there and like, look, they're doing over and above. You try to lock them down for a few extra years. So you may negotiate early, even though that rookie could still be paid the base salary for another couple of years. That's common sense. That's my bit. That's not news. Mavs Warriors in the West. Yeah, I see, saw some people talking about that earlier. I like what Charlie posts once in a while. He just writes Biden. Biden. So what about Biden? I don't pay attention to politics anymore. I'm aware of what's going on, but we don't want to talk about politics. All right. Oh, look at this. Wow, that is freaking funny. I didn't even see this, that Nier had posted this earlier. What are my thoughts about Biden's reign so far? I don't look at presidents in the United States as having reigns, 
But my opinion of Joe Biden so far, um, awful, awful. It doesn't mean I want Trump to come back and replace him. Um, this economy is out of control. You see the gas prices. You know, it, it doesn't make sense when you think about certain things. We're getting out of COVID. There should be, you know, a, a excess. I mean, look at what we talked about with Sheeta yesterday with flights. You know, people don't understand. There's still places short-staffed here in New York with motor vehicles. Somebody renews a registration. All that has to happen is a computer prints out a cardboard. Somebody in the mailroom stuffs it in an envelope and mails it. That's it. Used to take about seven to 10 days. You renew a registration online, you get your new registration seven to 10 days. Now it takes up to three months. Why? Why? Um, it's awful. And it feels like the Supreme Court shit that leaked out about abortion, it almost feels like that was done to do, try to divert all the talk about what's been going on with Biden and the economy and everything else. Um, and you know my stance on abortion already. You know, I actually am fine with it, but I also feel that you have to get it done within a certain amount of time frame as far as a pregnancy goes. But I think Biden has been awful so far. And I hate of this idea of still labeling, you know, large groups of people, you know, because of a, a select few of assholes, no matter what you're looking at. Because, you know, you talk about, look at the uh, Supreme Court. And I said, CM Punk and others, very, very careless with what they're saying. Rich white men telling women what to do. You know, why even fucking use the white part about it? You know, to get women to be mad at white. What if those Supreme Court judges were black and you wrote rich black people? You don't think there would be an uproar in this world? How's about just rich, old, out of touch people? You know, I hate when people have to bring up religion and color and use it as a broad brush. I hate that shit. Hate it. All right. Let's see. What other question? We're going to open the phone lines very, very soon. So we would. Going right along with the questions. I love it. I love it. Great combo tonight. And again, whatever's on your mind, if you don't want to call in, go in the chat. Just write the word question, you know, in capital letters before your question so I could spot it quicker. So, uh, Kavan Lewis, I said earlier, what happened in Buffalo is disgusting. Unfortunately, there are racist, malicious, awful people in this world. It's been that way for thousands of years. There are racist people. There will always be racist people. And I always feel that if you spread love and respect and appreciation, that that kind of like gives off to other people as well. You know, when you see some stories online and it's good stories of people being good, now, it rubs off a little bit. Maybe it in inspires you to do something also. Someone's generosity may inspire you to maybe do something as well, even if a wrestler does it. You know, you mean to tell me all the stuff that Titus O'Neil is doing, that when you see it, it doesn't give you that inspiration that you want to help someone to do so that. But when people out there take the actions of a racist and try to labor like, you know, like, look, oh, this white supremacy is out of control and these white people and white people, you know, it makes you fearful. Just like I said, it was disgusting and after 9-11 that everybody who was Indian, Pakistani, didn't matter. In, in my neck of the woods, they were fearful to walk down the street because somebody would take it out, take 9-11 out on them. Oh, he looks like a terrorist. He looks like he's related to one. Of, he looks like Sheikh Abdul, blah, blah. You know, that's fucked up. I, I used to be very close friends with a Pakistani. His name was Asif. We used to play cards with him. And shortly after 9-11, I brought this up before, we went to play Romino at my house. And we were talking about 9-11 and everything, and he started sweating really, really bad. And he said he's scared. He's scared that people are going to show up in his bodega and take it out on him. And he says, I don't have anything to do with it. Look at China. Look at what happened with COVID. You had people, especially in New York, People assaulting Asians 
because of COVID. Think as it, why? Why? Taking it out on Asians because of COVID, taking it out on the people of India because of white supremacy, uh, excuse me, because of 9-11, and taking it out on white people because of white supremacy, they're all awful. They're all awful. One is not worse than the other. They're all awful. I hate the label. Uh, what happened in Buffalo, you know, that's disgusting. It's disgusting. Um, I can only control what I do and what I profess. I know a lot of people feel that I've become soft over the years. But no, I actually try to appreciate life a little bit more. You know, you get a couple of cancer scares. You see your, your mom clinically pronounced dead three times. My father with major heart surgery last January. You know, you see all this other stuff and me getting married later this year. You know, you think I give a fuck about podcasts in the sense that, oh, well, this person doesn't like this or, oh, this podcaster has more views than you. Or this. Are you kidding me? I just want to have fun, have a good time. And I want everybody to laugh and have a good time. You know, I want, you know, because you never know what happens tomorrow. You know, shit could be taken away from us like this. You know, any of us out there. So we got to just have more fun. You know, that's what it's about. All right, back to wrestling. Run DMG. I love that. Run DMG. My favorite rap group growing up as a kid, Run DMC, got me in trouble with Stevie Ray back in the day, if you don't know that story. Uh, who wins a fist fight, Kenny Omega or Disco Inferno? Uh, Disco Inferno, I actually heard, can hold his own in a fight, but he's older now. And I think, you know, just because of, you know, what happens when you get older, I think your reactions are a little bit slower. I think Kenny Omega would probably beat his ass. And that doesn't mean I don't like Disco Inferno. There's a lot of what Disco says that I agree with. There's some things that he says that I absolutely disagree with. But I think simply because of age, Kenny Omega would beat him up. Uh, am I going to watch the Eclipse later? No, I'll just watch highlights online. Honestly, I, I'm, I want to try to like spend some quality time with uh, my significant other tonight. Yesterday and the day before, I slept. I had my COVID booster Friday. I am happy to say, other than sleeping and a sore arm, no issues at all. I didn't feel beat up, didn't have any low temperature, didn't have any fever at all, nothing, nothing. All I had was just sleep. I slept from Friday afternoon to Saturday evening. I slept about 20 hours. I just, that's how sleepy I was. But I'm good now. Good. Does MJF remind me of Gino Hernandez? No. Not at all. Not at all. It reminds me a little bit of Roddy Piper. It reminds me a little bit of Roddy Piper. Um, Roddy Piper being mocked for wearing a skirt. MJF mocked for being Jewish. I think that's the closest you could get as far as that goes, but no, MJF reminds me of Piper more than anybody else. He reminds me of Piper meets CM Punk. You know, MJF is just really good on the mic that he could just spit out insults without even thinking about it. Um, and it is easier when you have that creative freedom that if the first thing comes to your mind is to call some woman a fat whore, then, and you could say it, you know, then you could just throw it out there and it just flows. But if you work, that's why I said it's going to be a big challenge in WWE if MJF goes there because his spur of the moment reactions to some people, you know, he's not going to be able to say a lot of the things that he says now, you know. And some people are going to say, oh, I hate this watered down version of MJF. You know, again, that's why I hate when people try to compare the two products, AEW is TV 14. WWE is PG. Yes, you get 50 year olds that still like the PG product more than the TV 14. But there's a reason why there's ratings and there's a reason why everything AEW does is TV 14. It's meant for an older audience and the style and the attitude and the verbiage and the blood and everything else is more for an adult audience. So 
Does it benefit AEW for Hangman to beat Punk at All Out? In my opinion, it benefits Hangman Page. Um, I know Tony Khan, we, we mentioned it the other day, he feels that um, Hangman Page had the greatest championship reign in AEW history, heavyweight championship reign, world championship reign, because they, the, they don't use the term heavyweight. Uh, I think that is disputed by a lot of people. A lot of people think Moxley. A lot of people think Omega. I think Hangman Page needs one more decisive win, and it ain't against Takashita this Wednesday. I think if Hangman Page beats CM Punk in Chicago, I think that would be really, really interesting. And I think that would back up Tony Khan's claim about Hangman Page. The question is, would AEW and Tony Khan have the balls to have CM Punk lose in Chicago to Hangman Page. Hangman Page, no matter what, is going to get booed in Chicago. Even if Hangman Page shakes CM Punk's hands after, even if they hug, even if they blow each other in the middle of the ring, even if they exchange iced tea, the crowd is still going to boo the crap out of Hangman Page because they're in Chicago. So would AEW actually have CM Punk lose in Chicago. That would be ballsy, and I would love to see it. Not because of CM Punk's attitude in recent months, but only because I think it is very unexpected, and I think uh, Hangman Page needs one more big win. That's how I feel about it. Um. Kaya David, who do I think will be the first two-time AEW champion? Uh, probably Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega. Um, no reason why he can't regain that championship. Uh, Moxley, we don't know what his you know, future is going to be. I think he signs for at least another year. But you see what Moxley, you know, it's funny. When he was champion, all his promos were about this title means more to me you know, other than family. Eat, slept, shit, AEW. What's that title? And now it feels like titles don't matter when it comes to Mox. I think Trio's title is probably more in Moxley's future than anything else. So I would go with Kenny Omega. I would go with Kenny Omega. Jericho, I don't see it. I don't see it. I wouldn't have a problem with it, but I don't see it. Jericho is doing his thing. Championships are not really brought up much anymore when it comes to Jericho's name. I don't think Jericho needs it. I heard the Bullet Club leaving Impact. Which show will the Bullet Club appear on in the future? Certainly won't be WWE. It could be AEW, but the problem is, you know, Bullet Club is New Japan, and, uh, you know, AEW is not going to profit off of that. I could see Bullet Club involved with Forbidden Door. I mean, I'm surprised nobody has really brought up Bullet Club and Forbidden Door. I see that. In fact, I could possibly see a match between the Super Elite and the Bullet Club. Doesn't that almost sound like it, it should? So I would say AEW, if anything. But even if, it sh if they showed up elsewhere, it doesn't really matter. You know, we, we brought a, this up recently. The Briscoes. The Briscoes. If you pay attention to social media, you would think that millions of people are pissed off that, a that Tony Khan won't sign the Briscoes to AEW contract. Some people blame it on people within Warner Media that don't want the Briscoes this and that. But the fact of the matter is, the Briscoes are an impact. And you would think if there is this gigantic audience that loves the Briscoes, got to watch the Briscoes, you know that they're going to be on Thursday's impact. You can't even get 50,000 
of AEW's million that tunes in, 800,000, and you can't get 50,000 of those extra viewers to watch on Thursday just to see the Briscoes? I mean, I've watched wrestling shows over the years because some of my favorites would appear. Oh, my God, so-and-so is going to be on the show tonight. Oh, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to check it out. And you can't get this to watch the Briscoes and Impact. That goes to show you. Fans are supportive more of the promotion than the individual wrestlers. Because you see, look, you have Minoru Suzuki show up in Impact. You had the Briscoe show up in Impact. You had the Bullet Club show up in Impact. You had various Ring of Honor wrestlers show up in Impact. And every time the ratings either stood the same or they went down. What does that tell you? Where are the fans? I got, oh, he's going to be on TV tomorrow? Yeah, I'll watch it. Nobody. Nobody. That's ridiculous. That should tell you. That's why I think Impact is in worse trouble than you think. Because they're bringing in a lot of names that social media you know, gives that perception that they are must-see TV. Oh, my God, Minoru Suzuki's on Dynamite. Oh, my God, unbelievable, amazing. Oh, my God, look, I'm shaking. Unbelievable, unbe oh, my God, amazing. Oh, you know, things that go hard. So Impact's like, hey, Minoru, would you like to be on Impact? All right, cool, cool, cool. Look, everybody, Josh Alexander versus Minoru Suzuki, blah, 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 versus Minoru Suzuki, blah, 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 blah. and doesn't, doesn't convince anybody to tune in. What does that tell you? And, Benjamin, I'm not exaggerating. They've done it. Look at Jay White. Oh, my God. Out of everybody, Jay White is the perfect example. Jay White shows up on AEW. Forbidden door! Forbidden door! Oh my God, amazing! Touch me! Pinch me! Oh my God! Oh my God, if I die tomorrow, I'm a happy person. Jay White, Jay White, Jay White! Oh my God, oh my God, forbidden door, forbidden door! Jay White is on Impact every fucking week. And they don't tune in to watch him on Impact. So either they only want to support the promotion or nothing. If Jay White is one of my most favorite wrestlers, epic, amazing, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, Jay White, Jay White, Jay White. Oh, yeah, he'll be on Impact tomorrow. Ah. Nah. There is nobody. There is no, Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega is another good example. Kenny Omega, when he first showed up on Impact, it boosted the ratings. After a couple of weeks, it didn't matter. Kenny Omega would show up. You know, you have Matt Hardy and Private Party show up for a little bit, and it didn't do anything with the ratings. It just kept going down and down and down. Because these fans, it has to, it, it, you could take a lump of shit. And if the lump of shit is going to appear on AEW Dynamite, you will have social media and uproar. Oh, my God, I can't wait to see this lump of shit. But if that same lump of shit shows up on, a, on Impact Wrestling, no, nah, it's not, not, not worth nothing. Chris Silva, Chris Silva. Do I think the Ezekiel storyline is similar to Mr. America? Uh, not as blatant, but I'm enjoying the Ezekiel storyline. I'm enjoying it. Of course it's Elias. But remember, Elias is not his real name either. You know, so it's like, you know, the same person is the same person who played Elias and now Ezekiel. So I love it. I love it. I, if you remember early on, I said, you know, I got good feelings about this. I think this is going to be one of those more lighthearted storylines. You know, I'm fine with it. You know, look, we, one thing that we used to always say about Elias is he's not utilized that great on TV. And by the way, we're going to take calls in five minutes. So get ready for anybody who wanted to call in. Five minutes, we'll start taking calls. Um, the one complaint we had about Elias is that his matches were either short or he didn't wrestle all that much. Never really showed what he could really do. It was usually, you know, oh, I am Elias. And then this the state, 
Or when he was a baby face, this the other wrestler. And, you know, sometimes it would just be the skit. You never really got to see him. Now you see him wrestling, doing a little more, and he backs it up. And then they have him, you know, doing some raw main events with Cody, with Randy Orton, and with others. You know, I like it. I like it. And the fans seem to enjoy it. You know, it's goofy. You know, Chad Gable, wait till you see Monday with the DNA stuff. We've already talked about that. You know, when you think about DNA, even if it comes back that the DNA is Elias, no shit. If Elias and Ezekiel are brothers, they could have very similar DNA. You know, the only way they can try to prove that it is Elias and not Elias's brother is if Chad Gable were able to get some form of DNA from something that Elias had. So he's not going to get a toothbrush. He's not going to get a sock. You're not going to get a disposed cup because in storyline, nobody knows where Elias is. So when he gets the DNA and shows it and it proves it, that's how DNA is only going to say that they're family members. No shit. It's a stupid storyline, but wrestling sometimes could be lighthearted. So not everything needs to be, you know, thinking, knowing your history, Easter eggs. People just want to be entertained. And some storylines have to feel like a blood feud. Some storylines could be just competition. Some storylines could be funny, lighthearted, feel good. Randy Orton and Riddle is more feel good. You know, when you chant, you're chanting usually because you're in a good mood, you're happy, and you like that wrestle, you like what you're seeing, so you chant, you express yourself. You know, when people say what, that's usually when they just want to troll a heel or they're not enjoying what they're watching on TV, so they'll what it as a way to say, look, I, I don't like this, I don't like what you're doing, I'm not, I don't like this segment of it of so I'm going to chant what just to try to, like, screw it up a little bit. I know it's a little malicious, but it is what it is. So some people just <laughs> some people just want to, you know, be entertained. You know, I'd rather have a bunch of three to four star matches and be into it and entertained than have a five star, unbelievable, ninety five false finishes, epic, amazing, unbelievable exchanges, five and a half stars, seven and a half stars. Ah, give me Rock and Hogan four star. Give me that any day of the week, and I'm fine with it. I don't mind a five-star, six-star match here and there, but that's not a requirement for me to be entertained. Some of my favorite matches growing up, I think on the Meltzer scale, were only three-star matches. So what? Big deal. You actually go back and you look at Hogan-Andre, that match was just gaga. I mean, it wasn't spectacular. There was no unbelievable exchanges. We used to do the show early on with this guy, Dave, the genetic freak. He said, Hogan Andre is one of the worst matches he's ever seen in his life. But the storyline was the match. The storyline was the story. And that's why everybody gave a shit. That's why 93,000 people showed up because that story, they were so into the story, you know, and that match, those fans were energetic, even though that match really look at it, it's not very good. I don't need five-star matches to be entertained. Saray might be gone. I will look into it. I will look into it. Um, it's a shame because she came in with a house of fire. And unfortunately, you know, where do you go from here with her? You know, they did the whole locket thing, which was corny, but of course, you know, this is NXT, it's developmental. They're trying to develop the wrestlers for the main roster. And Saray, you bring it to the main roster. I'm sorry, I see her getting squashed like a grape. Why would you keep her in NXT? For Listen, when people say, oh, that person should stay in NXT because they could help with some of the other stars of tomorrow. We're doing a breakout tournament with eight women and there's a whole boatload of women that are not in the breakout tournament. They got enough women to have matches. Saray is not needed, unfortunately. Uh, very, very talented. But um, 
you know, would not surprise me if uh, she ended up exiting. I wonder if it would be her choice. You know, I wonder if it would be her choice. So uh, Sonia Deville would not be let go. She would not be let go. Uh, they have been giving her the, the management role uh, for various reasons. There was some emotional stuff as well. And by the way, thank you, everyone, who really took note of what I said the last couple of days about Roman Reigns, you know, probably needs a little bit of a mental break as well. Being home with family, with his kids, with his wife. Uh, it's not just a physical thing. There is an emotional, you know, exhaustion as well. And I think a lot of people forget that, you know, this aura that people are making that WWE is fucked teasing at Roman Reigns. If Roman Reigns leaves, then we talk about it. What if, 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 you know, I, I, I hate people looking at the worst case scenario because nine times out of 10, that worst case scenario never happens. So, you know, WWE is not, not going to come to an end. They're not going to be a major trouble. Roman Reigns takes a little time off. We brought it up earlier this week. Last year, Roman Reigns did the same thing. He did not appear at Hell in a Cell, but he did appear at Money in the Bank. Probably doing the same thing this year. Then you got SummerSlam. And then you got the UK tour. So you tell me, where's this extended period of time that Roman's taking off? Oh, he won't be in uh, Tallahassee, Florida. Yeah. And a lot of other champions didn't work every house show either. There's, there's no story there, everyone. They're teasing the doom and gloom to get views. That's what it is. That's what it is. All right. Before we take calls, John Cena 2011. Though I think Jeff Hardy will become AEW champ at some point. He's 28, so he's got nostalgia goggles on, but he's still really over and could still go. He deserves it. Um, I don't see Jeff Hardy with the heavyweight title. Because right now, when you look at AEW's roster, you feel like Brian Danielson should have this championship. AEW is extremely happy with Hangman Page. You almost feel like uh, Kenny Omega has got to get it back at some point. People think MJF should be heavyweight champion before the end of the year. You think of CM Punk. You know, there's five people right now and AEW may be playing hot potato with the TNT title. They're not playing hot potato with the heavyweight title. So over the next two years, do you really put it on Jeff Hardy? I don't see it. I don't see it. And plus I honestly don't know how much longer Jeff Hardy can really go at the, 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 the pace that he is, you know, we've all noticed that Jeff Hardy's only had a few matches in AEW and they're using him almost as if he's terminally ill and he's going to die in two months, you know, Oh my God, I'm going to die in two months. I'm not, I'm just saying figuratively, if I was going to die in two months and I feel fine, then I'm going to do every fucking crazy thing on my bucket list. I'm going to jump out of planes. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do everything I always wanted to do before I go. It almost feels like his contract is terminally ill, that his contract is for a very short period of time. So we got to get the ladder match in there. We got to get the crazy dive in here. We got to get the Hardys versus the, the, the Young Bucks in here. We got to get him to do this. We got to get the fantasy match with Darby. We got to get a match with him and, and Sammy. We got to get this. We got to get this. We got to get this. We got to get all these things. In. Rapido, quickly. Rapido, super rapido. Jeff Hardy may not be in his company uh, two years from now. So let's get it in as quickly as we can. What the fuck is the rush? What was the rush to have him do all this shit? So I don't see, I don't see him become an heavyweight champion. I mean, it would be a nice story. It would be a, a nice story. I, I, I love Jeff Hardy. I mean, I'm not thrilled with the way he left WWE, but hey, you know, also talk about mental burnout. You know, he was mentally burned down with WWE. 
you know, mental health is very, very important. Very important. Um, everybody deals with it. And for some out there, it is a very big part of their life. All right. So let's open the phone lines. And uh, I know we were a little late opening the phone lines, but so when great questions keep coming in and keep coming in, and it's not just Super Chats. I know anybody on audio only thinking, oh, oh no, the, the chat room is, is lit up tonight with awesome questions. Um, we really weren't going to talk about Tammy stuff tonight, but Charlie, I think Tammy's lawyer has to try to get a plea deal, but I don't know if they're going to give a plea deal. I think, you know, Florida, the f victim's family, uh, as I said in replying YouTube comments, the victim's family would have to probably sign off with the DA that they're fine with a deal. Like if the, if the DA got an offer from the lawyer on Tammy to plead guilty to whatever, if the DA was considering it, the DA would definitely run it across the family of the victim and see if they approve of it. And I don't think they would. If one of my family members was killed from a drunk driver, I wrote this on YouTube, responding to a comment today. If somebody killed my mom, my dad, my fiance, my brother, um, I'd, I'd either want them to get the maximum in jail, or if they got bullshit, I would bail them out and I'd run them over myself. I. I'm not one of those that could see a little sympathy and they said, look, 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 if somebody has a tragic accident and you know, being a little bit reckless and they show a lot of remorse, I might have a little more sympathy. But if somebody killed the loved one of mine and that person is on social media acting, trying to make excuses for why my loved one died and this, this and that, oh, fuck no, would I agree to a deal? So no, I don't think a plea will happen. Jeff Hardy versus CM Punk would be a return feud. Remember, that was one of the last feuds for Jeff in WWE before he left. Remember that infamous meme? I still have it. Remember when CM Punk had the belt and on the bottom it had Jeff Hardy on it? It said, dumbass, this could have been you. I still have that saved in my computer. So they could do that. CM Punk needs to turn heel but not in Chicago. Chicago would not go for that. CM Punk needs to turn heel, not Hangman Page. I thought about it. CM Punk needs to turn heel, uh, but not in Chicago. All right. So we're going to open the phone lines, and uh, the numbers are on the screen. For anyone that wants to call in that may not be actually looking at video right now, and it's just like, Lounging back, relaxing, their eyes closed. I will read you the phone numbers. It is 225-366-8669 or 833-366-8686. Couple of things I want to just tell everyone. Number one, you know, keep your question, you know, pretty reasonable as far as time. We want to get as many calls in over the next half an hour before we go, you know, so be respectful to others that want to call in. Second thing is for those that are trying to call in, if you hear that I'm on with someone, no need to redial a thousand times because unfortunately I have no one in the background that's going to put people on hold. Oh, you're next. Please hold. So if you hear me on with someone, you know, you're better off just waiting until, you know, the call is done. Then you can bombard me with redials. So I am going to open up the phone lines in a second, getting everything ready. And uh, whatever's on your mind, we will talk about it. So five, four, three, two, one. Eight, three, 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 six, six, eight, six, eight, six. And... Good evening, you're on. Who is this? Hello? Going once. Going twice. Gone. 
I hope we don't have any technical difficulties. I don't think that was a technical difficulty, by the way. So, good evening, you're on. Who's this? Uh, nothing there. Let me just... Let me do something, everyone. Put this back in. Hopefully, we're not having any difficulties. Good evening, you're on. Who's this? Okay, this is not good. Let's do this, everybody. Give me one second. I haven't done this for two weeks, so let me just exit the program and get back in, and we should be good. So hang on. My apologies. Sorry about the little technical bullshit, but all right. Plugged in. Good evening, you're on. Who's this? Nothing. Very, very strange. Hang on. Let's put this on Do Not Disturb. I, you know, it's... Hang on, everybody. Hang on. We've got some technical difficulties. I don't know why. So, let's, let me just plug this out, plug this in. Okay. Hopefully this works. I mean, honestly, everything is connected the right way, so we should be good. All right. I reopened the phone lines. Let's see what happens. I hope we don't have any issues. See, I don't hear any audio. That's the thing I'm a little concerned about. Good evening. You're on. Who's this? Wow. Oh, shit. That sucks. Yeah, we're having a technical difficulty, which is not good, and I'm getting bombarded with... Uh, all right, let me... We'll get this going. We'll get this going. Let me do this. All right. There's another way I could do it, but let's try this. I'm sorry, everybody. Let's see if we could get this going. That sucks, man. That really sucks. Uh, nothing is muted for someone that's asking. It's not muted. Let me try something else here. The speaker works, but this doesn't work. You know what? I know what we got to do. I know what we got to do. All right. I, I sincerely apologize, everyone, but this is what I got to do. We'll get this working. Let me just reboot this phone. So if you're trying to call in, just hang on for one sec. Let me just reboot this phone. And we'll, we'll get it going. So let's keep, let's keep questions going in the chat room. I am rebooting my phone and we'll be good to go. So, nah. Tammy's boyfriend would not prank over here. So I'm rebooting my phone. Bep tried to call in. My apologies. Look, if we end up having phone issues and we can't take calls tonight, then we'll pick two winners in the text questions. But as you can see, I'm booting it up. You know, we'll give it a shot. You know what it could be too? I mean, no joke, this plug connects the phone to the mixer and i've heard that the those plugs sometimes go bad could so it could simply be something where the cable went bad so we'll try it now let me let me see update apple watch no i don't want to update apple watch let's take the do not disturb off all right we'll give it a shot again if this doesn't work then unfortunately we're not going to be able to take calls tonight so I sincerely apologize. All right, you could try again, 833-366-8686. There's nothing else that it would be. I mean, I could do Bluetooth, but Bluetooth calls suck. Let's try it. Hey, you're on. Who's this? Nothing. All right, so we got to do Bluetooth. Let's do Bluetooth. Let's see if we could do Bluetooth. 
Let me put this on Do Not Disturb. Let's try Bluetooth and see if Bluetooth works. You could stop trying to call in because uh, I'm going to try to connect with Bluetooth. Let's give it a shot. If this doesn't work because I don't want anybody to have to keep waiting, then unfortunately we're not going to be able to take calls tonight. So let me configure this Bluetooth. Let's give it a shot. Uh, okay. We'll get Bluetooth working. I just don't know what the audio quality is going to be. It's connecting. It's connecting. Okay. Bluetooth is connected. So this definitely should work. Let's try it out. I'm actually going to call somebody back. Let's see if it goes through. This will work. This will work. See? It works. I called somebody back. Hello? Hey, what's Hello? going on? Hello? Hey, you just tried to call in. Just lower the volume on your computer thing. Uh, yo, is this Don Tony? Yes. I, I wanted oh, it. I felt bad. You were redialing. We had some technical difficulties, so I had to go to Bluetooth route, but I think we're good. Oh, okay. And I've been a huge, huge fan for, I don't know, since 2006, so for a long, long ass time. Very cool. But, um, Very cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um, I just wanted to know, like, your, um, I guess, I think it's inevitable that CM Punk becomes an AEW champion at some point. And um, I guess for you, what would be, like, the feuds you think would be, like, the best for Punk to, to have as champ? Like, yeah. I guess he would be a heel, probably, yeah. but. AEW fans want to see this version of Danielson or Moxley to take on CM Punk. Mm -hmm. I think both of those are money. Um, I don't think we would see CM Punk versus MJF because Punk ultimately would be, he has to turn heel. I think even though Danielson, and look, in WWE, they really did not feud Danielson and Punk as much as they should have. So I think AEW's version of Danielson versus Punk would absolutely be money. Imagine if they did a three-way and you put in Moxley or somebody else in there as well. That would be money for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be great. And what about, do you think, like I know earlier you said that, you know, Jeff Hardy's kind of, you know, you don't really see him uh, getting the title which I guess I can kind of agree with because I understood your point. But do you think that as far as a few goes, that that would be a money feud to kind of have, you know, Jeff trying to, as far as like the storyline goes, him, you know, he has unfinished business with CM Punk. Yes. Uh, and as far as the title is, that's a, a world title is concerned. So do you think that would be like a big money feud? Absolutely. If CM Punk yeah. is champion, and they want to have a feud with him and Jeff Hardy and Jeff Hardy chasing the title, I absolutely am all in for that. I just don't see him right now becoming heavyweight champion. I think that would be a fun story, especially to revisit after all these years. But I think mm -hmm. in the end, uh, I think Jeff Hardy would fall a little short. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think and, that would be the, the good yeah. outcome for that. I agree. Sure. And, you know, this CM Punk as a heel would be much different than the straight edge society CM Punk that we had in WWE. So it oh, would be yeah, pretty yeah, would interesting. Be yeah, I, I, I definitely would love to see them go at it again. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Yeah. Well, um, well, uh, Dante, I don't want to, I know a lot of more, a lot, a lot more people want to call in. Um, thanks for picking up my call. It was, oh, what's it was your name, cool. by the way? <laughs> Oh, and in the, in the chat, it's John Cena 2011. Okay. This way, hey, yeah. if everybody likes your question, I want them to be able to put John Cena 2011 so we know. All right. Cool. Thank you, man. Be it well. Take great care. Great to be on. Thank you. Okay. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Later. All right. Bye-bye. Hey, so we got everything. Fit. Great question. I mean, I don't want anybody to think I don't want to see, see Punk versus Jeff. I would love to see it, but I don't see Jeff winning it all and becoming champion. I think him chasing the title against Punk would be excellent, but I think he falls a little short. Um, I don't know if I want to see CM Punk versus Matt, though. For some reason, I, I'm not feeling that right now. So, all right, let's open the phone lines again. Now, I think we had it on Do Not Disturb. So if we did, and we did, I took it off. So now you'll be able to call in. So we're good.
I know we got corny read uh, uh, ringtones. Hey, your honor's this. Hello. It's got to work. Hey, your honor's this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got it. I got it. I fixed it. Hey, your honor's this. Now you're good. DT? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're you fine. You're good. Oh, finally. Can you? Are you sure? Yes. You're good. Oh, crap. I was like, I thought it was my phone or something, but how are you doing? I'm pretty good. You know, I never did the Bluetooth before, so uh, we had a little technical difficulty, but I got to be honest with you, I'm kind of digging this Bluetooth format because I probably don't even need to use wires anymore, which is great. So I apologize, everyone, for the technical difficulty, but this may actually, in the end, work out really, really good. So um, so what's going on? Um, pretty, uh, same. Passing glasses is doing fine. I'm just hanging in there tight. Um, I, there's a couple of questions I'm going to ask you as quickly as could. Um, what is your opinion of the AE WWE Most Treasures? I, I enjoyed it. Um, you know, it was a little goofy only because of how they presented it on TV. Um, you know, there was there was a couple of fans. I don't you got to look online, but there was a couple of fans that told some very interesting stories about you know their interaction with WWE. I mean, let me put it this way: WWE was not necessarily really pursuing items because they really really wanted it or they had to get it back. Or this is and that. It was more of to tell stories on TV, and I don't remember what the two auctions were. Uh, if I remember correctly, it might have been SummerSlam banners or this and that. But right after the series ended on TV, WWE put up a couple of things for auction. I remember it was a, it was an auction. It might have been part of a charity, and it, I think it was an auction that would involved all different forms of sports. I don't remember the name of the auction, but it was only about two three months ago, and they were auctioning off. Uh, if I remember correctly, like a big boss man nightstick, I think a Mick Foley barbed wire bat. They auctioned off at SummerSlam banner and stuff like that. And I'm looking at this stuff in the auction. I'm like, wait a minute. This is like stuff with the WWE collectibles. It may have not been the individual actual item, but these were things that they were trying to keep and they were auctioning off. So the TV show was a fun show, but it was more about it being a TV show than them actually looking to recover things that have been lost over the years. Do you think they were scripted or they just, uh, I mean, I'm curious because uh, yeah, some of it was, was some of it was it, because some fans, you know, they're not the sharpest knives in the drawer. So some fans, they actually had to work out some things beforehand. Uh, there are some fans online that made some pretty uh, hard demands. And I heard in at least two cases where fans wanted too much and WWE said no, but they gave the fans a little something and they played off on TV that the fans gave it back to them. They worked out a deal, but in the end, the fans still had the item. I don't know what items they were, but some news reporters covered it at that time. You know, not every fan wants to part with something and WWE wasn't going to over you know pay anybody by a crazy amount just to get something back so yeah they have uh when kane was before kane he was in smoky mountain they took that one sure they have the rick the rick flair start kate 83 and they have the rick flair woke with a black and white one yep. which they he i guess there was a story that he lost it i mean like I enjoyed the, the lot of stuff because I don't know if they're rare, but I think the flare ropes are really legit. They were more interested in the story behind the item than the item itself. Yeah, it's like that show. It reminds they're trying to do like Pawn Stars. If you, if yeah. you I don't know if you're a fan of that show. Sure, sure. Yeah, they, they were cut trying to do that, but it's different. Yeah, I mean, it was it was more about telling the story behind the item. And then getting the item, you know, to complete the story. But, you know, there were more valuable items out there that didn't have much of a story behind it that they just passed up on because it didn't really tell a good story on TV. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, this is the last one. Um, I, everybody is like, it's like trending wide. I know you're talking about the sunny story earlier uh, yesterday, but I just want to get your opinion of this one. But uh, if, if Sonny would have stayed with Shawn Michaels, you know, think Sonny would not been happy with this? I'll, I'll answer this the best I can. Um, because uh, before, ET, not to cut you off, I'm very apologize. Before you answer the question, I was just curious because I've been watching her interviews of uh, a title match, I think it was, or, or RF videos, where he, she brought up of the stories about Sean and the, the, Mon the Montreal screw job situation. And then um, she chose Chris Candino instead of Sean. And then I was just curious about your story of it because even though I was only in diapers at the time, but you probably knew the story. I don't know if you knew. But um, I'll get your back to your opinion, so go ahead. Sorry. All right, I'll just answer it like this. Um, I am friends with Johnny Candido, Chris's brother. And uh, Chris, I called friend also. Not a close friend, but I was friends with him when he was still with us. And all I'll answer it is this way. Uh, there are a lot of things about Tammy that Chris, uh, that uh, Johnny has told me over the years and um, what her problems are go back to her early 20s. Uh, there are a lot of stories about her, a lot of incidents when she was in her early 20s. This is way before she ever got involved with Shawn Michaels or, or anybody else. Um, she was with Chris far before she ever went to WWF. Um, she unfortunately has had a lot of issues way back before that. So as far as shoot interviews and podcast interviews, you know, I mean, wrestlers are only going to tell, you know, so much the truth, but her problems go back far before anything that's ever been on TV. Hmm. But do you think that Sonny and Sean, I mean, you think Sean would have saved her if it, if it wasn't her all, the way I, she is now? I, 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 I don't, I'm, go ahead. I feel, unfortunately, the problem she's had, I don't know how you fix that. I mean, maybe somebody could have just straightened her out, but the problem is a lot of her issues go back to her 20s. And when you're now in your 40s, approaching 50s, and those those same issues just get worse and worse and worse, it pretty much it feels more like she would have brought down whoever she was with, not the opposite. Because some people say, oh, she keeps meeting the wrong people. Oh, she keeps doing this. And I thought that early on as well. But the fact is, it seems like she ultimately brings down people that are around her, not the opposite. I don't want to get into specifics out of respect to, you know, the conversations I've had with Johnny and others privately, but it's the reverse. It seems that people who she ends up getting involved with, she brings them down, not the opposite. Yeah. I've mentioned it. I brought this up because when I heard about what happened to her right now, I just did my little research of her a little bit. Not not that too much. It's just, uh, I mean, I just watched one of her history interviews. She talked about Sean. And she said she wrote a book about her. And she said something, I don't know what the title was, but uh, I just want to bring it up to you. So I know you know Sonny Moore uh, pretty much. And you know Chris Candido's uh, family and him. Uh, it's tough to say. No, I mean, it's just her no, relationship with, I mean. with Shawn Michaels. With uh, it, it, I, I can't predict what somebody would do and not do in a relationship. But you know, it's uh, she. Her problems were way before that. Yeah, Shawn. Back then, Shawn has problems as well. Back then, but not anymore. So yeah. All right. Sean, Sean's having yeah. a good life. I mean, um, he's very happily married with a family, and uh, you know, good for him. Nothing but the best for him. Yeah. All right, DT. Thanks for the question. You're welcome. And that means a lot. And uh, I mean, hope you have a good month of May. You too. <laughs> you too. All the best. Be well. 
All right. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. I know uh, we're having like ringtones on there and stuff. I would probably have to play around with the Bluetooth during the week. But uh, all right. Let's take a few more calls. Let's, you know, try to keep it, you know, you know, to the point because we want to get a bunch of people in here and we've actually gone 20 minutes on two calls. So 833-366-8686 or 225-366-8669. Good evening, you're on. Who's this? Good evening, you're on. Who's this? Hey, what's up? With Rams fan. Hey, Rams fan, what's going on? I realize that every time uh, a call hey, comes in, I got to adjust. I got to set the Bluetooth. It's not, I have to play around with it during a week, but you're good. What's going on? Okay, I'm going to be quickly in and out. Sure. Um, real quick to follow up what I said about Hacksaw Jim Duggan earlier. Yes. I guess his uh, prostate cancer still isn't taken care of, so. On top of getting uh, hormone shots daily, he has to get radiation treatment and all that stuff. I want... He's going to be posting videos about it, I guess. I'm surprised he doesn't get the seed. I'm surprised he doesn't get the seed because that's what happened to my dad about, God, it's got to be like 20 years, 25 years now. And uh, with the radiation seed, they implant it, and you really cannot be around small children and I think pets for, I don't remember if it's a couple of weeks or a couple of months. I think it might have just been a couple of weeks, but he had the radiation. I was actually looking into, you know, that option as well, you know, once I know exactly what I'm going to do. But, um, you know, the radiation seed took care of him. He's still cancer-free to this day. I think the problem is, is that if you don't detect it early enough, the radiation seed may not be an option. So, um, that's what I have a feeling may have happened to Hacksaw. He might, he, his cancer might have progressed a little bit too much, and he has to go a little bit more, you know, vicious with it. So I hope he beats it, man. I mean, you get it early, okay. you catch it early in time, it is curable. Real, uh, real quickly, DT, because I got to go. Um, sure. Just, uh, I have a quick quick question about Hikaru Shida. Do you think that you see her leaving AEW anytime soon? Do you think there's more to meet the eye on this injury? Yes. And I'll let you to speak about that. Yes. And I'm going to let you go. So, uh, take All care. right. Be well, my friend. Take care. Um, yeah, no, I think Hikaru Shida will be exiting AEW sooner than later. I don't know when her contract is up. Uh, I don't know if she would actually quit, but you see her reaction the other day when AEW took her out of the Owen Hart tournament. What people need to understand, because I know some of you have emailed me after yesterday's show and said, why didn't they just book her for the following week? The thing is, is that they want the finals to be at the next pay-per-view. And based on the schedule, they cannot skip a week if they do skip a week, then you have to have more than one match on Dynamite. And you may even have to have a match on Dynamite. And then a winner of that match, wrestle on Rampage. And with Rampage being taped, you could have the person wrestle twice in the same night. That's a mess. And honestly, that's why I defended AEW. You really look at the schedule. They had no choice but to take out of that tournament. And Karshida feels that for the past year, her use in AEW has not been all that great. She had a, f a great feud with Serena Deeb, but still it feels that Akar Shida's taken some major steps back in that company. And as a result, you know, people need to understand too, she doesn't live in the United States. You know, it's not like she lives 500 miles away, 1,000 miles away, 2,000 miles away, where she gets on a plane for a few hours and there she's at the show. She's flying in from Japan. She's got a lot of commitments in Japan. She's doing some pretty, she just had a match in Japan I heard was an hour and 45 minutes. Google it. I heard that she wrestled an hour and 45 minutes, one match. So she's got a lot going on over there. 
you fly all the way to the States for bullshit. You know, that's not that kind of that much fun. And it's not like they're paying her a crazy amount of money. You know, in her eyes, you know what? Keep your money. I'm going to stay home. I think that could end up happening, but I don't know if she will actually quit. But because of the travel involved, I could see that as a possibility because it's very frustrating. You know, that's the problem when you hire wrestlers that are not living in the United States. You know, when you realize the amount of money involved for travel, the amount of time involved for travel, and you really don't have anything for that person right now, would you fly Sheeta in, you know, 30 hours to wrestle a four-minute match? You know, that's why I think, truthfully, it's not against Japanese women. You know, I saw a tweet the other day. We talked about it yesterday. It's not about Japanese wrestling. You know, there's a lot of logistics involved that is much more difficult and complicated compared to wrestlers that are here in the U S all right, let's take a couple of more calls and you know, we'll stay on an extra 15 minutes because of the technical difficulties earlier. And I know one call went about 15 minutes itself. So, all right, let me open the phone lines again. 833-366-8686 or 225-366-8669. I got to remember when I connect, I got to manually connect it to Bluetooth. Otherwise, it will not work. So I apologize for the technical difficulties tonight. Not expected, but shit happens. Thank God we don't get it that often. But uh, all right. So give me one second. Let's connect. Hey, you're on. Who's this? Hi, it's Anthony. This is DPPJR from your YouTube channel. Hey, what's going on? Oh, hey, Mars. I just want to how you're doing, and I got two questions here. Just sure. real quick. Absolutely. Um, um, this is this involves WrestleMania next year. Um, I'm hearing rumors that there's going to be second interest of Ronda Rousey, and could I affect what's going with the draft this year? I. What was the second part? I heard Becky and Rousey. What was the second part of that? I heard it having a match rest in the end next year, and I'm wondering if that's going to affect the draft later this oh, year. Oh, okay. All right. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily could. It, I don't think it would affect the draft because, you know, one of those two could win the Royal Rumble and get the title shot. One of them could win a briefcase and get the title shot. So uh, that's one good thing about Royal Rumble and Money in a Bank. And even when they were doing Elimination Chamber with title matches, you know, even if you have a wrestler on the other brand, and it happened with Big E. Big E was actually, you know, on the SmackDown brand. He became Raw Heavyweight Champion. So the draft wouldn't affect it. But I have also heard that WWE is considering Ronda Rousey versus Becky next year because a couple of years ago, they originally were going uh, Becky versus Ronda. And then as we talked about at that time, there was a lot of concern for Ronda being as inexperienced as she was going one-on-one -on -one high profile at WrestleMania, especially that they it was going to be the main event. So they added Charlotte into the mix, but now Ronda is a few years removed since then, and they think that Ronda will, you know, you know, figure it out in time for Mania of next year. So I think Becky versus Ronda could happen one on one next year. I think Ronda would be ready for it. But uh, what title would it be for Raw or SmackDown? I think it would be SmackDown. The Fox deal to me is much bigger than USA Network, even though the USA Network is a long time, longer time commitment. I think SmackDown would, you know, especially for Fox, I think that would be the money, the money match SmackDown. Uh, and I've got one more question. This sure. is for um, AEW New Japan. Um, if Steve Punk does win the AEW Championship, would he be facing, I don't know, Hideo Atari. I think whoever is heavyweight champion in AEW at that time should face the heavyweight champion in New Japan. I think that's the only way it should go. 
I don't think any title should be on the line. I think Tony Khan and New Japan should resist trying to use the winner-take-all idea like WWE does. I think it's more for bragging rights than anything else. Um, I think, you know, it's got to be heavyweight champion versus heavyweight champion. But I also feel no title should be on the line. And, uh, and it, you know, I agree. No title on because it makes this event bigger. And I'm a AW fan, WWE fan, New Japan, Force fan. I just call things on the middle. And right now, um, they're all good. And I just wish, you know, wrestling to evolve more and get more, you know, into the spotlight. But I understand it'll take time and time to build that to that next level. And my next, my final question is, what do you see, um, I think AEW wise, what do you see them going next year? Like for their titles or future uh, feuds? Well, I mean, the trios title is going to come into play. And, you know, a lot of uh, traditional wrestlers and, you know, Hall of Famers out there are a little concerned. They think that the trios titles are going to feel more important than the tag team titles. And I honestly see nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, I I feel the way they have set up that promotion, I think the trios titles will be the focal point in that company next year. I think when you realize that you have the super elite and then you realize that you have uh, the elite and then you think of Moxley, Danielson, and Yuta, and then you think about Eddie Kingston and Santana Ortiz, and you think of uh, Jericho and, you know, whoever else, and then you might see a stable with Darby Allen, and if Sammy turns babyface again, you might have a trios there. There are going to be so many trios. That's almost like their version of the six-sided ring. You know, NWA TNA wanted to have some characteristic about them that was going to be significantly different than WWE. And for NWA TNA, it was the six-sided ring. And I think for AEW, it's the trios title. That trios title is going to probably be the main attractive, attractive aspect of AEW that is going to feel different than any other wrestling company out there. Other wrestling companies have some formation of a trios title, but for AEW, that is really what's going to make them stand out different than WWE. So I see a lot of trios feuds in 2022, big time. We're going to have the company, and it's all going to happen after this whole World Cup tournament in for both um, both rosters, male and female wrestler. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Uh, it was, no, thank you, I see the uh, Owen Hart tournament. Got, they get to focus on the Owen Hart tournament. Once that concludes, then they'll f start with the trios. Okay, uh, thank you for my call, and uh, I've been listening to you since 2013. Yeah, <laughs> much love, my friend. Stay well. All right, take care. Be well. You too. Bye -bye. All right. Very. I think. What do you all think about that? That AEW in 2023, I think the trios title is going to be comparison of what NWA TNA's six-sided ring was. Um, that that is going to be what really stands them out different than WWE. All right, so let's take, how's two more calls sound? Let's take two more calls, and we will call it a night. I know we've already gone two hours, and uh, great convos tonight. Love talking about what you want to talk about. Obviously, during the week, we have news stories to get into. But, you know, tonight, it's all about, you know, what's on your mind. So, all right, I'm going to open the phone lines again right now. 833-366-8686, 225-366-8669. And again, you know, I apologize about the technical issues tonight. I think the plug is fried, so I probably got to get a new plug. but. If I could figure this Bluetooth a little bit more, I think that might be the better way to go. So, all right, let's take the do not disturb off. All right, so you could call in, and uh, we will be wrapping this up momentarily. So don't forget tomorrow night, 11.05, right after Raw, I will be up here giving you a Raw recap, and we'll get into any additional news over the weekend. 
And now I'm getting a couple of disconnects. All right. All right. This is giving me more issues. I don't even think we need to plug this in anymore. See? All right. I think we may have to call it here because we're having some issues again. I see a couple of calls saying go and write the voicemail and it's not working. So, all right. Let's just end it here. You know, my apologies again, but we had some good calls and, you know, we'll have everybody vote on what your favorite topic was as far as a call or call again and the chat room as well. And uh, we'll give away a pair of AJ Lee photos. Yeah, let's call it a night. What is it? 10, 11 p.m. It's still early over here. So, everyone, thank you as always for tuning in. Much love. You have a great night. Enjoy Raw tomorrow. Um, I want to see what transpires tomorrow with RK Bro and the Usos because as we've talked about already, that match does not feel anywhere near as important as it would have been with WrestleMania Backlash. And I, after what I said yesterday, my feelings have not changed. I expect it to end in a no contest Friday on SmackDown. Um, that DNA stuff tomorrow, you know, is going to be goofy. And uh, let's see what we get in the progression of Finn Balor and AJ Styles. Um, I think if Finn turns, I don't think it's going to be for a few weeks. They could have Finn versus AJ at Hell in the Cell. But I have a feeling that may be a little bit rushed. But at the same time, we're not going to get Edge and AJ again. Could they possibly do Edge and Damian Priest versus Finn and AJ Styles at Hell in the Cell? Tag team match? And then maybe Finn turns on AJ? That's a possibility. That's a possibility. But I also feel WWE would want to have a really good match at Hell in a Cell. So I'm not sold if Finn turns that night could happen the day after. All right. I'm going to jet out of here. Everyone, it's been real. And on your way out, if you enjoyed tonight's show, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber yet, consider subscribing. If you're not a channel member yet, consider becoming a channel member. Uh, tomorrow, 11.05 p.m. right here. Uh, Tuesday, we will be doing Patreon again. Tuesday, we are back to Tuesdays. And as far as Wednesday Night Dynamite, I'm, look, logistics-wise, I'm not sure if we're going to bring it back Wednesday, but I don't want to keep people hanging either, either. You know, I've been getting a lot of good feedback that you want Dynamite and NXT covered a little bit on Thursdays because this way Thursday's show is not just Q&A. We mix in some news and discussion as well, and the Q&A is part of the show. You know, early on, some people were saying, oh, the Thursday show and Sunday's seem like they're the same. So, you know, I, I might keep that coverage on Thursday, but I will tell you, I will definitely make a final decision, you know, sometime this week, but I kind of like covering on Thursday. I, I don't want to do it Wednesday night just because everyone else does. You know, I think you would rather hear some good discussion. And even if it's on a Thursday, then rush it do it five minutes after dynamite ends. And because you're rushing, you don't, it doesn't even absorb a sink in because you're busy typing up recaps. I kind of like watching it, thinking about it, letting it absorb, you know, talk about it Thursday night. So I'm not going to lie. I'm leaning towards leaving that on Thursdays. And I see some of you are even saying that as well in the chat. So we'll talk about it later this week. And uh, as far as Tessa Blanchard, when I get an update, I will let everyone know. Right now, it's just rumor. But when I do get an update, I'll let everybody know. So, everyone, have a great night. All the best. Enjoy Raw tomorrow. Post your feedback in the comment section. Today, I must have answered about 200 comments. So, you know, post it, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. And if you have any last-minute questions, post it in the comment section. I will answer them as well. So, uh, and look out for the thread in this episode where you could vote of your favorite chat question and your favorite call for the night. So we could announce the winners on Thursday for the two AJ Lee photos. So good night, everybody. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a podcaster for me to live any other way was nuts. 
To me, those goody good people who work shitty jobs for bum paychecks and took the subway to work every day and worried about their bills were dead. I mean, they were suckers. They had no balls. If I wanted something, I just took it. I ran everything. I paid the bills. I paid the hosts. I even paid the masked maniac. Everybody had their hands out. Everything was for the taking. We always called each other good fellas. You would always hear from somebody. You're gonna like Don Tony. He's all right. He's a good fella. He's one of us. But if you're part of my crew, nobody ever tells you they're gonna get rid of you. It doesn't happen that way. There weren't any arguments or curses like in the movies. See, your haters come with smiles. They come as your friends, the people who've claimed they care the most for your life. And now, now that's all over. And that's the best part. Today everything is different. There's lots of action. I don't have to wait around for everything like everyone else. Oh, I didn't get the vaccine? Fuck you, vaccine me. Oh, your delivery guy has COVID? Fuck you, feed me. Right after I moved here, I ordered egg noodles and ketchup, and I got spaghetti with meat sauce. I'm no longer an average nobody, while they get to live the rest of their lives like a bunch of schnooks.